Hey guys, it's Dylan. This morning I just did the interview with Trent Mill from First Cobalt. It was a very valuable interview. I'm going to upload that this Sunday, so stay tuned. Hit the notification bell for that one. It's a good one. Getting right into it, Sawyer Merritt tweeted, the NTSB issued an update on the crash situation and they said auto steer was not available where the crash happened. So if you wanna actually read the full report, I'll link his Twitter below. But this situation has been covered ad nauseum, so I just wanted to share that little latest tidbit. And Sawyer also shared an update from Dan Ives that Tesla is indeed off to a strong start in Q2 and is on track to deliver over 200,000 units despite the chip situation. He continued, Ives and team also believe the China EV delivery numbers that come out over the coming weeks will show April and May demand was strong not just for Tesla but domestic EV players like Neo, Xpeng, and Li Auto. Found this on Reddit and I completely agree. Tesla should add blind spot cameras when changing lanes like other brands. Feels like an easy software ad. I had a Honda Accord years ago that had this feature and it was my favorite part of the car. There was a button you could push on the stock that brought the right blind spot camera up on the screen. Sometimes I would honestly drive with it up the whole time. I really think Tesla should implement this but what do you guys think? Also, we got some more footage of the Cybertruck and there is indeed a front camera. I'll play the nine second video for you. It's probably gonna be hard for you to see, but there is indeed a camera on the front of the Cybertruck. And in case you don't believe me, no T-Rex fatality said, I hate Reddit's compression, but it's there. I saw it in person. There's also dual cameras in the rear next to the license plate. And a quick update from Photovoltaic Magazine, Tesla is updating the chemistry of its mega packs. Tesla watchers report that the company has shifted to cobalt-free lithium iron phosphate LFP batteries for its three megawatt hour mega pack energy storage product. This shift could cut costs and ease demand for supply constrained nickel based battery production capacity. This of course would lead to the mega pack seeing lower production costs, which could be passed on to customers of grid scale energy storage. This is very interesting timing as I just got done talking about the situation with Trent. So once again, on Sunday, stay tuned for that interview. Reddit user Sydney LB made this wallpaper of the Tesla Roadster. I loved it. I've included the link below if you're interested in this photo. Panasonic expects operating profits to jump by almost a third this business year. And a big part of that is through their decade old partnership with Tesla that is finally making money. And they said that these automotive batteries, which are nearly all of Tesla's account for 40% of their operating profits. In this last bit, we've heard so many times already, Panasonic this business year will also begin a test line in Japan to make the bigger 4680 battery cells. Sadly, they didn't give us any new details on where or when, but hopefully sometime soon, we're gonna get some concrete details on this test line. So the Gigapress news keeps coming in. A Tesla's supplier is building a 9,000 ton press in China. LK Tech, IDRA's parent company, is currently building a 9,000 ton press, which could be capable of producing parts that are notably larger than the Model Y's single piece rear underbody. To refresh your memory, we have the 6,000 ton Gigapress that are currently at Fremont, and Tesla seems to be a definite front runner for this new 9,000 ton machine. Most of the speculation is that the 8,000 ton Gigapress would be large enough to make single piece components for big vehicles like the Cybertruck. And they added, this giant machine will be used for the production of chassis components components of larger vehicles like pickup trucks, full electric lightweight goods vehicles, and SUVs. And most people think that this 9,000 ton press will be for the Cybertruck or the Semi because it's bigger, but there's also some new speculation that it might be for the $25,000 car to make it in a literal one piece casting because of this tweet from Elon. January 18th, 2021, with our giant casting machines, we are literally trying to make full size cars in the same way that toy cars are made. But I would love to hear your guesses below. Is this 9,000 ton press going to be for the Cybertruck, the Semi, or the $25,000 car. And my favorite news item of the day, Tesla is expanding Model Y production capacity at Fremont with, you guessed it, another tent-like facility. Tasmanian reports Tesla has begun expanding the tent where Model Y GA is located. Another tent will be built on the other side of the Model 3 assembly line, hinting at a significant expansion in the manufacturer's capacity. In February, Tesla applied to the city of Fremont to expand its vehicle production facility for another 64,000 square square feet. And it seems it will become a continuation of the assembly line for the Model Y. And so here you can get an idea of the simple, single, straightforward assembly lines. And Tesla intends to build another tent, which seems to be as large as the Model 3 or Model Y assembly lines, which indicates a significant expansion of production. And as you can see, the current Model 3 and Y production capacity at Fremont is already 500,000 units. This new assembly line should boost that by tens of thousands of cars at least. So this is a very strong sign of 
course, we saw this coming. The Model Y demand should be Tesla's bestseller by far. And let's not forget, when Elon called these structures tense, it was mocked and ridiculed and criticized endlessly online, but now it's become a blueprint essentially for Tesla's new Gigafactories. The sprung structure-based Model 3 line was the brainchild of automotive president Jerome Guillen, widely known as Elon's problem solver. Even GA4's loading bays were placed on the sides of the structure, allowing Tesla to take deliveries into the line efficiently, that same model they have exported to Shanghai and Berlin and Giga Texas. And Elon even said that the vehicles produced at the site had slightly higher quality than cars made elsewhere. And we also need to remember Tesla critics often overlook the fact that Fremont is a legacy car plant at its core, so Tesla is doing the best with the hand that they have been dealt. But remember, this GA4 formula with its simple production lines to its numerous loading bays at the side is being used in Shanghai, Berlin, and Giga Texas. And these tents are actually sprung structure, which are much sturdier than what most people think of when you think of a regular tent. So overall, very bullish news for Tesla. And as you can see, Tesla is down about 6% on the day. Surprise, surprise. It looks like we may be getting an all electric Porsche Macan sometime around 2023. Here you can see a picture of it. Not much other information has been given, but it will be built on a new electric platform with a similar 800 volt architecture like the Taycan, but it will have significantly more range according to Porsche. As you can see, we have a potential class action lawsuit coming against Tesla because of the solar roof, which is causing Tesla a lot of headaches as of late. And these customers in particular had a deal for $46,000 as the final price, which Tesla bumped up to $78,300. And if I was a customer, I would obviously not be happy with this either. And the couple that started this whole thing, Philip Dallin and Mary Arnston from Pennsylvania. Dolan and Arnston in late April filed a lawsuit against Tesla in US District Court for the Eastern District of PA. The suit said the tech giant was in breach of its contract. It also said the company violated consumer protection acts covering home improvement and trade practices. However, there's this. An article in the Uniform Commercial Code allows buyers and sellers to modify agreements after they've been signed. It continues, however, both parties must consent to the changes. That seems here not to have been the case. We did find that we basically made some significant mistakes in assessment of the difficulty of certain roofs. And the Pennsylvania couple's complaint said it would seek class action status. So we'll see what happens with this one. And so it looks like we're about to see the Ford F-150 EV version called the Lightning. We don't get a ton of details. It's coming out May 19th. They have this quick promo, but I'm just gonna show the few seconds where you can see the car. That was literally it. The F-150 Lightning coming May 19th. We'll see. A quick update on the Mach-E sales. Ford said it moved 6,614 vehicles off US dealership lots in Q1, putting them on track for 25 to 30,000 Ford Mach-E sales this year. And Ford has said that the average Mach-E has been sitting on dealership lots for about four days. And so this year to date, Ford has sold 8,565 Mach-E's. However, with this new April data, here is the most important point. As you can see, that April figure, 1,951 units, is down from 2,637 in March and 3,739 in the first full month of Mach-E sales in February. So the Mach-E sales are trending down. And I was going to cover the Bitcoin Taproot upgrade today, but I'm going to cover this tomorrow to give it the proper time. There was a lot of news today. This is the biggest upgrade to the Bitcoin blockchain network since 2017. And the last time they tried to do something like this, it ended up in a civil war of sorts. So this is a very big deal and something we should go over. Also, for those of you who are new to Bitcoin and you're still skeptics, on Patreon, I'm going to start doing more Bitcoin tutorials from a beginner perspective to help you think through things like why it has inherent value, why it matters to the future, what problems it's solving, what I see for the future of Bitcoin in the crypto space. So of course, I'm gonna talk a little bit about that on the channel, but a lot of it will be over on Patreon too. Stay tuned for all of that. Thank you guys for watching and a big thank you to everybody on the next screen. I hope you guys have a great day.